Hello, and welcome to another episode of Tom's DIY. If you're like me, your attic doubles as valuable storage space for items you may not use that frequently, kind of like holiday decorations. In today's video, I'll walk you through how I built my attic lift to eliminate the back-breaking chore of getting things in and out of the attic using those rickety stairs that came with the house when it was built 20 plus years ago. So let me show you how we did it. Fate, it seems, is not without a sense of irony. Well, that didn't work out very well, did it? Well, let's go back and see what happened. First, I want to thank everybody for your well wishes, comments, and advice. Over the last six months, the video has gotten quite a bit of feedback. Uh, some positive, you know, some not quite so positive, which, you know, in light of things was probably deserved. Um, but it's times like this that makes me reflect on the words of some of our greatest leaders. John F. Kennedy, those who dare to fail miserably can achieve greatly. Uh, Henry Ford, failure is only the opportunity to more intelligently begin again. And probably my favorite, Nelson Mandela, do not judge me by my successes, judge me by how many times I fell and got back up again. And then, of course, there's Red Foreman. Dumbass. 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 So my sacrum took the brunt of the fall. Uh, the sacrum is the lower part of the back, just above your, your buttocks, just above your tailbone. Um, at one point, the entire area above my tailbone was just black and blue. It's like somebody just beat me with a baseball bat. This ball is crushed. I crushed the front of my L1 vertebrae. You can see it in the picture here. Uh, kind of like a Coke can. Uh, so when I fell, it basically just, you know, pushed the front of it down. Um, the back part of the vertebrae was intact, um, which is the part that bears all of your weight. Uh, and that's also what protects your spinal cord. Um, the doctor said that that was the most important part. It was undamaged. Uh, so after keeping track of my measurements over the period of the eight weeks and making sure that there was no additional movement or any bone fragments or anything left in there, uh, I got the clearance to move forward with more tomfoolery in the garage. We're up in the attic and you, you can kind of tell that uh, it's a small frame that's right around the opening that goes down into the garage. This is all welded out of uh, one inch steel. Uh, I believe it's 11 gauge. So it's basically uh, three sides of a rectangle with the four legs. The four legs are bolted to uh, rafters. So one of the things that you're looking at now is more of a close-up diagram of what was built. Um, so again, it's the one-inch square tubing. It's all welded together. And then I've got these bearings that the shaft sits in and rotates. Um, these are just standard garage door cable drums. Okay, and then those are going down to um, the. These are back porch swing springs to kind of help absorb. Uh, some of the bounce. Uh, these are probably a little heftier than I actually needed because uh, it takes a lot to make them give. Uh, probably too much. Um, and then of course you can see that this is just standard half inch pipe. Uh, it's coming out of the end of that joint uh, right out of the bearing with threads. I take that up to a one inch pipe um, and now you can see that it has a welded collar which is capturing the shear key off of the shaft from the motor. And then I actually drilled and tapped it with a bolt um, just to further ensure that there's no movement. So that collar that's welded on there was what was missing. So this pipe was the pipe that flared, allowing the shear key to spin freely inside, which essentially just dropped the whole lift with me on it to the floor. So like I said, I was uh, in the process of designing a solution. So this is the, the stop, you know, so the motor is actually upside down from its uh, original orientation. Uh, so the way that it's supposed to work is when the cable is being pulled, there's a, uh, like a donut on the cable. That donut engages this handle and that basically stops the motor. Um, so, because it's upside down, doesn't have the donut, and I basically just 
repurposed everything. Um, I was trying to come up with a way that when this lift reached its topmost point, uh, it would trigger an arm that would come up and then trigger this arm. So essentially that it would, it would do an auto stop. So the controls, you know, so if we want to move the lift, simple and so like I said I mean it fixed it it works it functions like I wanted it to originally um, The shaft or the the cable drum shaft which is a half inch pipe uh, there's an adapter that takes that up to a one inch pipe the one inch pipe um, I notched and gave it this kind of a keyhole here the shear key that's on the shaft for the motor um, once once it's inserted into the, the one inch pipe uh, the shear key marries with the keyhole and when the motor turns the cable drum shaft turns and as I mentioned, uh, because the lift was in its topmost position, the torque from the motor basically allowed the pipe to flare um, on these edges. And that allowed the shear key to spin freely inside that one inch pipe. So once the shear key was no longer making a positive connection with that pipe, the the cable drum shaft was able to spin freely and that's what dropped me to the ground. To fix that, like I, like I showed you upstairs, um, there is now a uh, steel collar, which essentially this is a one inch pipe. So I took a piece of uh, inch and a quarter pipe, um, or maybe it's inch and a half, I'm not really sure. And basically welded that around the outside of the one inch pipe. So I'm capturing the key uh, and what that does is that eliminates this from happening because it does not allow the metal in that one inch pipe to deform and release the key. Original design, not beefy. New design, somewhat beefy, beefier. Um, it'll keep this incident from happening again. So similar to the construction of the frame upstairs, this is all one inch square tubing, uh, 11 gauge steel. Uh, I welded the bottom frame, I welded the top frame um, one inch smaller, so it's half inch on all sides. Uh, so essentially it kind of tapers in slightly, and between the braces on the sides and the braces on the front and back, uh, they, those act as kind of guides, you know, once it gets uh, up into the attic. Uh, the distance between the top and the bottom is a 2 by 6 uh, that's the rafters in my attic. Uh, so essentially when this piece of three quarter inch plywood is flat with the ceiling in my garage. This piece of three quarter inch plywood is flat with the decking that's in the attic. Uh, so there's no gaps. On the bottom of the lift, um, so this is just one inch all thread uh, welded to the bottom of the frame. And then I put these little plastic feet uh, for, I don't know, chairs, crutches, whatever, uh, on the bottom of that, just to give it, you know, some feet to sit on when it's in its uh, all the way down position. The rubber feet keep it from sliding because it was just metal on the concrete. It may slip around um, with these little rubber feet on there. Once it's down, it just stays in place. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by the channel. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also, I've got a couple more videos in the works, uh, so be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you get notified when they come out. Uh, I put together a shed for a generator. We put some skid wheels on a buddy sprint van. Uh, did a little bit of home automation with some of my pool controls, etc. A few other things coming out. Also, um, this is going to have a prominent place in my garage to help me remember uh, to not be foolish. Um, so, probably hang this up somewhere back here. Please feel free to leave any comments, questions, or feedback that you may have. I always enjoy reading that, uh, and I respond as often as I can. Uh, but other than that, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Talk to you soon.